The color puce seems to stir up a lot of controversy and confusion. It is most widely described as a purple or sometimes green. However, puce is used correctly when it refers to something purple. The use of it to describe a shade of green is a misconception. When people use the word puce to describe a green, they are usually referring to a yellowish green shade or a pea green. This particular usage seems to be more widespread in the UK than in the US. Puce is most commonly described as a particular shade of purple, often dull or dusky with underlying brown tones. It can also have grayish hints or even be more of a dark red than a purple. But no one seems able to agree on the actual hue of puce. Pantone's version is more of a grayish brown, while a dictionary of color describes it as more of a mauvish pink. Regardless of where the color lands on the spectrum, it will always have, as its claim to fame, a connection to Marie Antoinette and perhaps even most shockingly, a blood-sucking parasite. The color's name is French for the word flea. Puce originally was said to be the color of bloodstains on linen or bed sheets from flea droppings, or after a flea had been crushed. In revolutionary France, color played a major role in announcing who you were and what side you are on. Marie Antoinette's tutorial whim set trends and came to symbolize the excess of the royals. Her appetite for fashion and extravagance became legendary. According to the biography of Marie Antoinette's dressmaker, who was the first celebrated French fashion designer, it states that the queen had a dress made in a purplish-brown color. When Louis XVI was asked what he thought of his wife's latest look, he humorously remarked that it was the color of fleas. From that brief exchange, a new color was born. The Parisian bourgeoisie adopted puce in droves, as it was cheaper than lighter tints and hid stains well. The bourgeoisie was a social class, equivalent to the middle or upper middle class, typically with reference to its perceived materialistic values. Puce was produced by combining madder root with a metallic salt or a mordant. This deepened and fixed the dye to a textile. Puce became the it color of the summer of 1775 in France, inspiring a myriad of hues, each with its own spin. Dyers and weavers struggled to keep up with the demand. Legend has it the color was so popular, it looked as if it would continue to prevail into the winter months. Silk vendors found that this would have been detrimental to their trade, so they presented new satins to Her Majesty. The Queen chose one of an ash gray color, and just months following his puce exclamation, Louis XVI saw his wife in a new gray gown and said something along the lines of, That dress is the color of your hair. According to a collection of anonymous letters from the time period, Queen's hair replaced puce immediately as the it color. From that moment on, puce was out of fashion. Ballets were dispatched from Fontainebleau to Paris to procure velvet and cloth the color of the queen's hair. No one can ever really know for certain what Marie Antoinette's dress looked like that summer of 1775, but we can certainly recognize the events that took place as the blueprint for modern color and trend forecasting many industries still follow to this day.